9. Now this is onward Christian soldiers, all right? This is you can sing this two ways. You can sing onward Christian soldiers marching as to mm. All right? <laughs> or you can sing it like soldiers, all right? And uh, we're going to sing like soldiers. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? All right, let's stand together and we're going to sing 429 Brother Bible lead us. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banner go. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before onward then ye people throng blend with hearts your voices in the triumph song glory Lord and to Christ our King, this through countless ages, men and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on. Right. That's good singing tonight. Good to see everybody in church this evening. And um, we have a lot to be thankful for. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, the Lord was merciful to us as a country. And I think he helped us last night. And uh, it was wonderful to see. Uh, the. I'm pleased with the results, obviously, of the election. And uh, it's no no guarantee that everything's great. Our, our, listen, our, our hope is not in the White House. Okay. Our hope is still in the church house. It's in the house of God and the people of God and God Himself, and uh, we don't we don't forget that. But I'm um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful there's a man like Mike Pence in the position that he's in. I believe he's a godly man. I believe he's a man who seeks the Lord, and uh, he's a good influence uh, in the administration. And um, uh, just you know, we had eight years ago, we had a fellow who said he wanted to fundamentally transform our country. That. I didn't believe our country needed to be fundamentally transformed. Amen. And uh, and that's he turned that around. Now we need to we need to turn, especially if we're transformed away from God. Uh, we need to get back to God and uh, back to looking to Him and just uh, morals and have some sort of moral compass in our land again. And I I, I pray the American people uh, took that step. I think we ought to quote all of Second Chronicles seven fourteen. And I just, they always say, if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. They leave out and turn from their wicked ways. That's a rather important phrase. And uh, you need to, need to include that. And uh, by the way, that starts with us. It starts right here in the house of God. Amen. So uh, excited about Sunday, excited about what God's going to do here I uh, hope you're getting out the flyers. We'll say more about that in just a few minutes. And uh, inviting people to come, praying for God to give us a great day on Sunday. 
All right, let's open with prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Lord, thank you for, uh, I believe, giving us a little more uh, grace uh, and mercy by our election last night. And Lord, I'm praying that uh, we will not squander that opportunity. This will be a time where, as a country, we could turn our attention back to you. And Lord, we would seek you to not just sing God Bless America, but desire that you would be able to bless our country again, and that once again we would be the lighthouse for Christianity to this world, and we would be the one who would lead the way in sending missionaries and sending the gospel forth. You've blessed us abundantly, Lord. Uh, help us to uh, honor you with what you've given to us. Now, Father, we pray your blessing upon our meeting here tonight. Thank you for each one that's made their way to church on a Wednesday night. Lord, I'm asking you to, to minister to each of them tonight as only you can. Make this service exactly what you would desire it to be and what you know we need it to be. And we'll thank you for it. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Would you turn with me in your hymnal to number 441, please? 441. I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me. Sunlight. Let's sing that first together. 441. I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me. And with the sunlight of his love did all my darkness flee. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love within. Though clouds may gather in the sky and billows round me roll, however dark the world may be, I've sunlight in my soul. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love within. Let's sing that last. Soon I shall see him as he is the light that came to me. Behold the brightness of his face throughout eternity. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love within. Brother Neil. Thank you. This evening's missionary message is from the Steve Boots family. They're church planners in Virginia. This is November 2016. God at work. As I mentioned in our previous update, we saw 42 people come to our first service on October 2nd, with 12 of them being first-time visitors from the community. I will give you more about the following Sundays, but I have to share with you how God worked out an amazing detail for us. We're planning to meet for our Wednesday night services at a local library because they have two meeting rooms with plenty of space in each, and they were free for use. We really didn't want to be in one location on Sundays and then a different one on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, but the problem was is very cost prohibitive as the hotel meeting space on Wednesdays was $500. I was told by the library that we could only book seven days in advance, only one week at a time. Three months before our first Wednesday, I put an alert in my calendar because I didn't want to miss it. Exactly one week before the first Wednesday, I tried to book a room at the library, and it was full for almost 90 days out. Uh, I found out later that the seven days out thing was not really a real thing. <laughs> Obviously, that wasn't much help to us at that point. We began to pray and look. I found a community center just minutes away from the hotel, but they wanted $135 per evening. A much better deal, but still a little more than we felt we could afford, especially considering that we were already paying for Sundays and we were expecting it to be free. Long story short, I contacted the hotel again and they told me the whole situation. They offered to let us use the conference room, which we use for our Sunday school classes and nursery on Sundays, 
for only $90 a week. This was almost half of what they had originally offered, and we began meeting there on our first Wednesday without missing a service. God allowed us to have one meeting location for all of our services at a much better cost than what we'd originally expected. God is good. First month. It's hard to believe that we already completed our first month here at Mount Victory. I told my wife that we we're going to turn around and it'll already be our 10th anniversary. We have seen 21 first-time visitors come here over our first five Sundays. We thank God for each one of them. Of course, we'd like to see more, but we realize that God is going to build his church. He is going to do it as we wait on him. A missionary in Canada and a good friend of ours came to our church, Brother Carl Bernard. He and his family came a couple weeks ago, and we asked him to preach our Sunday evening service. It was a big help to us because he started the church about 14 years ago and knows exactly what we are going through. He made the analogy that a baby church is just like a human baby. They have to crawl, take baby steps before they get up and run. It was exactly what we needed to hear. We have begun knocking on doors and been able to hit about 600 so far. We are doing the work, but we are fully relying on God to give the increase. Please continue to pray with us. Through these beginning months, we would be able to establish a strong foundation as God builds his church here in Glen Allen, Virginia. Continued prayer, effective outreach as we continue knocking on doors in the community, souls to be saved, first-time visitors and returning visitors, wisdom going forward. Thank you and your faithful prayers and support. <coughs> yes. Hope you're continuing to pray for the Boots as they plant a church. There's always uh, a lot of emotions, ups and downs when you when you start out in a work like that. Some days, boy, everybody seems to come and you're excited, and then uh, some Sundays nobody shows up and it's just you and your family or a couple other people, and it's kind of then you get discouraged. And uh, so pray for them, and uh, that Lord will continue to sustain them and bless the work there. All right, prayer guide. Anybody need one? Everybody good? All right. On the back with the coming events, let me say this. First of all, tonight, remember to, if you're cooking a turkey for Sunday, pick your turkey up uh, after the service uh, over in the Fellowship Hall. There'll be someone there to direct you and make sure your name gets crossed off the list uh, that you picked yours up. Uh, remember, those of you who are, uh, have the asterisk there, you're going to make gravy as well. Uh, if Even if you don't make gravy, if you can bring in the broth. Is that right, Brother Bob? Is that what you're saying? If you just bring your broth in, that will help, okay, and uh, them do some things they want to do here. So uh, if you can do that, that would be wonderful, okay? And, uh, again, there's a pan out there. If you want to cook in it, you can. You have to be careful. Sometimes those aren't real sturdy when you get the turkey out, but some you have your own. Now you cook in, and that's fine. Uh, the two small pans you take are for white meat and dark meat to bring it back, all cut in those pans, all right? And uh, then remember... Tomorrow night, we're down at the prison with the RU Inside, and then Friday night right here with Reformers Unanimous. Uh, Saturday, they're out at London at 8.30 to 10.30. We'll have our meeting here at 9 o'clock sharp uh, in the auditorium Saturday morning, and I uh, hope everybody's here and uh, in your place. Then, of course, we, we have our rally and our time together, final instructions, and then we have the lists up that things that need to get done, uh, accomplished for Sunday, and uh, you begin to work on that list, and uh, generally speaking, uh, we have 40, 50 people here. Uh, it's everything's usually done by noon, and uh, that's a good thing, and uh, get everybody uh, geared up and ready to go for Sunday, okay? Uh, remember, Sunday morning now, you, be, you can drop things off here, turkey and different things you bring in, uh, but then we're parking on the other side of Kirk Williams, and we're parking over here in the uh, uh, Marco's Pizza parking lot as well, okay? Just a reminder for that for Sunday, all right? And make sure you remember, we want to be here. All of us want to be here by 930, okay? Be here an hour ahead of the service so we can greet visitors as they come and help them find the, the different uh, classes that are meeting and the places they could go, okay? All right, and the, other, the only other note I want you to make sure you remember is November 22nd. That's a Tuesday night. That'll be our midweek service right, right before Thanksgiving. A lot of folks travel at Thanksgiving time, and we don't want you to miss church Wednesday night, so we just make it on a Tuesday evening, and that's our worker appreciation service, and that's always a delightful time, so make a note of that, all right? Praise reports, we had 11 at CRC last Thursday night. There were two new guys and three that received Christ as their Savior, and uh, they had 12 at London uh, with one new man. 
We are at uh, just around 10,000 flyers. A little over 10,000 have been passed out. So we got five to go for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all right? So uh, we got a work cut out for us. So um, let's, uh, let's sign some out tonight, get them out between now and Saturday, okay? And invite folks to come. I've seen several of you have uh, posted on your social media, and that's good. Uh, continue to spread the word and invite folks to come uh, to, to the service on Sunday. Continue for the different uh, church requests and their ministries, and of course these on the health list. Uh, take special note of um, uh, Paula Ross uh, on the list. Uh, Paula is in ICU now as of yesterday over at Mount Carmel West, and a uh, very serious condition. All right, so pray she has a stomach abscess, and now they say she has also has a blood infection. So it's a serious business, so pray for Paula, all right? Uh, really needs our prayers, and Ronnie as well, for that matter, okay? And then we continue to pray for these in authority, uh, not only our president, but those who uh, were elected into office last night, and then, of course, our military and these who are battling cancer. The salvation list and the salvation of these folks, the unreached people groups, and for God to send up laborers to go to reach them, and then, of course, our missionaries, uh, highlighted tonight by the Boots family, uh, that is our uh, church planter in Virginia. All right, we're going to have prayer this evening, and uh, I'm going to have Brother Yoder come up and lead us in our prayer tonight, if he would, and uh, appreciate the Yoders and their ministry, and uh, we ask him to lead us in our prayer this evening, Brother Dave. Let's pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your many blessings to us. We thank you for the good news concerning the uh, people that were saved at the prisons and the work that the RU is doing there. And we'd ask that you would continue to do so. We'd ask that you'd keep those doors open for us so that we could reach more people for you and that they would get busy about your work. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us as a nation. We think of the things that have transpired over the last 24 hours in the voting and, and so forth. And, Lord, we humble ourselves before you uh, because of the awe that we have because of your greatness and why you would take thought of us, why you, you would care for us, why would you would be concerned about us at all. We don't know, but, Lord, it's very obvious you're merciful towards us. And, Lord, we would ask that you would give us time as a nation to get back to where you want us to be. We would pray for uh, President-elect Trump and the Vice President Pence, that they would work together as a team uh, for the cause of Christ and to get back to biblical principles. We would ask for uh, President Obama and those associated with him uh, that they would be saved before it's eternally too late. Uh, Lord, we uh, are not any better than anybody else, but Lord, we have the truth. We thank you for saving us. We thank you that we're eternally saved, and we thank you for your precious blood, but you said that it's not for ours alone, and so we'd ask, Lord, that our friends, that our family, and those that we uh, come in contact with at work uh, would be saved, and that we would do our part and giving them a pre clear presentation of the gospel. I pray as our thoughts are on this uh, Turkey Day coming up this Sunday that uh, our, our attitude would be what it should be, that we would reflect uh, what a true Christian is uh, according to the Bible, not maybe how the world views it, but, Lord, what we ought to be for you, and uh, that we would have a good testimony as a church here in Grove City, we'd ask, Lord, that uh, many uh, unsaved people would be here that would hear the truth of the gospel and be saved. Lord, again, we're uh, uh, counted a privilege to be part of all this that goes on. We would pray for uh, this Paula Ross that's been uh, put before us, particularly with the uh, serious medical problems that she's having and Lord we would ask that you would intervene there do a, a work that could be said it was only from you yes. we, we thank you Lord for uh, 
the health to stand here tonight. Uh, Lord, we can't control our own heartbeat. We can't control our thoughts, and just one thing would change that uh, that would have an impact on our life greater than what we can imagine, and yet you sustain us constantly. So we certainly know you have the power to heal, the power to, to uh, draw people close to you. So we're, we would ask, Lord, that you would do that for those here on our prayer list. Uh, we, we do want to bring before you tonight this church plant by the boots, Lord, uh, the many blessings that you're already bringing their way. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would allow them to keep the momentum going, that you would keep the wicked one away from them that would stall them out. We thank you for the good news concerning the place where they're able to meet and have that continuity uh, for every service at that same place. Uh, again, Lord, we thank you for your kindness to us, not only as individuals, not only as a church, but also our nation. We want to tell you that we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Two hundred and ninety four in your hymnal, please. Two nine four. No other plea. Would you stand with me as we sing? Two nine four. My faith has found a resting place. My faith has found a resting place. Not in device nor creed. I trust the ever living one. His wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Let's sing that third. My heart is leaning on the word, the written word of God. My Savior's name, salvation through his blood. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. My great physician, he heals the sick, the lost he came to save. Let's sing that last together. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. All right, you can be seated. Ushers will come and we'll get our offering tonight. And uh, we had Brother Pierce last week, and uh, so we had an offering for him, and so we didn't get Brother Yoder's offering in last uh, Wednesday night, so we'll do Brother Yoder's offering this evening, all right, and uh, continuing to give to what this goes for is for his trips that he makes. Uh, he has one scheduled to go to India, and are you going to attack Armenia on the end of that? Have you figured that out yet? No. Not, not for sure yet? Okay. And uh, we're talking about that. Don't know if that, that's not been finalized yet. But uh, he's definitely going to be in India for two weeks and uh, working with a pastor there who has, I think, 18 or other, 18 or 20 other pastors uh, that are ready to come and be taught and uh, learn from uh, Brother Yoder. And so uh, we want to help make sure that happens. And uh, we get them there. You know, a lot of the nations, then the, especially when you go to the 1040 window, the opportunity is going to be to train the national people that live there to go and to reach their folks. You're not going to go into that country and live. Uh, you have to have opportunity to teach the nationals and then let them go back and reach their people for the Lord. And uh, this will be a great, a great ministry and a great opportunity that uh, 1040 International has. And uh, we want to give towards that cause. Okay? Let's pray and we'll ask God's blessing uh, on the offering tonight. Father, thank you for the privilege that's ours to give. Thank you, Lord, for the doors that are opening uh, for 1040 International and that ministry. And particularly, we're asking, Lord, that you would provide for Brother Yoder, uh, Lord, the airfare, the, the money it took for the visa to get into the country. And, Lord, we, we, uh, we just believe there's great things in store there for the pastors. And uh, these men are excited about having someone come and teach them. Uh, how they can be more effective in, in pastoring their church and teaching and preaching your precious word. And so, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to send him there and make sure that he gets there and back home and he can minister to these men of God there in that place, thousands of miles from here. And, Father, I pray you'll bless our giving tonight as only you can. May it meet the need. In Jesus' name, amen. Lisa, 
All right, take your Bible this evening, Ephesians chapter 6, as we continue our study on the armor of God and spiritual warfare. Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible says in verse 12, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and then tonight, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, Father, we pray that you'll help us this evening as we look into your word once again. And Holy Spirit, I pray you'll be our teacher this evening. Lord, I pray you'd guide us into all truth as you promised you would. Help me as I bring the lesson this evening that I can be clear in my communication and that, Lord, you will give each of the individuals, all of us, understanding of your word this evening. Lord, we would want to rightly divide the word of truth and we want to grasp what the truth is here about taking the shield of faith and how important it is in our spiritual warfare. And so, Father, help us tonight as only you can. And I'll thank you for it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Spiritual warfare. We have our loins girt about with what? Truth. Remember we talked about because the number one thing the devil is, he is a liar. I don't know how many times people have believed his lies for so long, they believe it to be true. And I have to look at people and say, what you're saying is not true. What you're saying is a lie. You've just believed it for so long, you think it's true. So we, our loins are girt about with truth. We have on the breastplate of righteousness. We have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We talked about the peace of God and the peace with God. And now he says, above all, take the shield of faith. And it says, by this shield, we're going to be able to quench or extinguish all the fiery darts of the wicked. Not some of the fiery darts, not most of those fiery darts, but all, everything Satan can hurl at us can be extinguished by this shield of faith. No wonder it's above all. Uh, you have to be able to have this shield. So we're going to talk about the shield of of faith here this evening, all right? Several things about this shield as we take the shield of faith. Number one is that this shield gives us complete protection. The shield gives us complete protection. I think I've mentioned it before that the shield uh, was not a, a small little shield like you kind of picture somebody carrying uh, with them. But it's the idea, and I'm turning over here to Psalm 5 to read a verse to you, Psalm 5, verse 12. But it was a, uh, in Psalm 5, verse 12, it says, For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous, with favor wilt thou compass him, uh, him as with a shield. It says, with favor you'll compass. What's compass mean? You're, you're surrounding him as with a shield. That's the kind of shield it was. It was a shield that would... I almost made one out of cardboard, you know, but uh, if, if you took this, something like this pulpit which didn't have the wood in the middle where I could get up in it and when I crouch down behind it, I could be completely hidden from enemy and it surrounds me. And that's the way the shields were that they would carry. They would carry that shield, but when needed to in battle, they could plant that shield down, get in behind it and crouch behind it and they would be encapsulated, surrounded, and you couldn't get to them. You couldn't hit them. And so that's the shield. It's complete protection. It protects us from all directions. From the front of us, to the back of us, to the right hand, to the left hand, over us, under us. Complete protection. And we need that. Because Satan's attacks are too deadly for us to survive without the shield. We have to have the shield. Remember, when the sons of men come to present themselves before God, and Satan came among them in the days of Job. And when God said, have you considered my servant Job? Remember what Satan said? Satan said, well, you put a hedge round about him. You know what he's saying? You're shielding him 
You're protecting him. You're compassing him about, and I can't get to him. And the only way Satan was going to get to him was for God to allow him to get to him. He said, okay, you go ahead and do that. Uh, Job is still going to serve me. And it's true. God was protecting Job from Satan's attacks. And he does the same for you and me. All right? So it's complete protection. Now, number two, let's, let's remember this. Faith must have an object. We talked a little bit about this on Sunday morning. I want you to understand something. Faith, faith is not the shield. Okay? Faith is not the shield. The object of our faith is the shield. Faith in itself doesn't provide protection. Just like faith in itself doesn't give you eternal life. It says, well, how are you going to heaven? Well, I believe. Well, it, 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 listen, it is ultimately important what you're believing in and who you're believing in. You say, well, how are you going to go to heaven? Well, I have faith. Well, it doesn't matter if you have faith. What object is your faith in? Do I have faith in myself? Do I have faith in something else? Do I have faith in my works? Do I have faith in my church? Do I have faith? What's my faith in? My faith to go to heaven has to be in Jesus Christ. It's got to be in the right object. If your faith is built on anything else, you're not going to get to heaven. That's according to the Word of God. Uh, faith in a faulty object will not protect us from Satan's fiery darts. Give you, give you an illustration. Years ago, when there was a civil war in an African country, the, the king of that country hired foreign mercenaries. Soldiers come in, he paid them to fight off the insurgents of the, of the people of his country, the soldiers of his country. And he was fighting them off with these trained, these paid soldiers, trained soldiers. And of course, they were easily beating back the untrained people of the land as they were trying to overthrow the king in the Civil War. And so what the leaders of the rebels did, the, the untrained soldiers, the people of the land, they got the witch doctors to get white ashes and cover these soldiers with white ashes, convincing them that it made them bulletproof. That the bullets would not be able to penetrate them if they had it covered with these white ashes. And of course, they believed them. And they went out and sometimes standing right out in the open to shoot at these trained soldiers. And of course, you know what happened. They, got, they just got riddled with bullets. And they were easily defeated. What was the problem? They, they were so, listen, they had faith. They had faith in something that was faulty. They had faith in something that wasn't going to do them any good. And listen, it's important that you know faith has to have the right object. You can't just have faith in nothing. Faith isn't alone. Faith has to have the right object, and our faith uh, has to be in the right thing. The Bible says in Proverbs 30, verse 5, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in Him. So that brings us to number three tonight. And what is that? The object of our faith is God Himself. The object of our faith is God Himself. That's who our faith has to be in. That's the object of our faith. All right, let's look at some scriptures together, will you? Go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 15. Genesis, chapter 15, please. Abraham splits with Lot in chapter 13. He, in chapter 14, has to go rescue Lot after he's taken captive by some kings that attack Sodom. And he's returning from that battle, if you remember, and he meets Melchizedek. And he gives him tithes of all. And king of Sodom then wants to give Abraham reward for bringing back the people and capturing them. And he won't take anything from the king of Sodom. He tells him up in chapter 14, if you notice in verse 22, Abram said to the king of Sodom, I lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from, the, from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. I said, I'm not taking anything from you. 
I'm not letting you take any credit for this. My hand is lifted up to God. Okay? So Abraham makes a stand there. His faith is in God. Now look at chapter 15. After these things, after what things? He gave tithes of what he took from the kings, gave it to Melchizedek. It's an Old Testament appearance of Christ. And then, then he won't take anything from the king of Sodom. He takes his stand of trusting only in God. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy... What? I am thy what? And thy exceeding great reward. Abraham, I'm your shield. I'm the one who protects you. I'm the one who surrounds you. I'm the one who you keep your faith in. Hey, he's not just Abraham's shield. He's your shield. And he's my shield. Okay? I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy in chapter 33, please. Moses is speaking to Israel before God takes him, and God's going to take him and have a private burial uh, with Moses. And look down at verse number 29 of Deuteronomy 33, where Moses says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And then he says, And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. He's saying, talking about Israel, and he's saying, You've been saved by the Lord. He's the shield of your help. Who's going to shield you when you go into the promised land? Who's going to protect you when you travel? It's the Lord your God. He's your shield. He's going to protect you. Now move on over to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel 22 is a... It, it, it's a little reprieve here in Samuel. You almost feel like you're reading the book of Psalms when you get to 2 Samuel 22 because it's a psalm of David tucked into uh, 2 Samuel. And in 2 Samuel 22, David spake in verse 1, under, the David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge. My, my Savior, thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. A great, great psalm there, a song that he sings uh, in Second Samuel. So remember, Satan is a created being of God. He is not all-powerful. He is not omnipotent. God created him. He is a powerful being, and he's more powerful than you or I. He's an angel as an angel of God. But he is not any match for God. And he's no match for the presence and the power of God. He's unable to overcome the presence and the power of God. So therefore, we remember that our shield of faith is the person of the Lord himself. So through faith, I'm aware that standing between me and the enemy is the Lord himself. But I have to be aware of that. I have to be conscious of that. that. Notice he said, with the shield, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. He didn't say that God will quench them. God quenches them, but we have to have a part in that. If I don't acknowledge his presence, I'm pray for Satan to get to me. When one of the attributes of God is, God is omni present God is always there okay when th therefore think about this when Adam and Eve are in the garden and they're having the conversation with Satan Eve particularly having this dialogue with Satan let me ask you a question where's God 
God is there. But she didn't acknowledge he was there. She did not, she was not aware of his presence there. She wasn't aware that he would be her shield, that he would have stood before between her and Satan if she just would have acknowledged his presence. But isn't that what happens when we sin? When we do things we shouldn't do? When we say things that we shouldn't say? When we say things we shouldn't say, when we do things we shouldn't do, if we go somewhere that we know we, we don't belong, who else is there? God is. But we don't acknowledge that He's there. be a whole different thing, wouldn't it, if you sit down at the computer and you knew God was sitting right beside you? Hey, i got news for you. He is. Be a different thing what you'd watch on television or what you'd uh, uh, put over Netflix if, if you knew God was sitting right beside you. Hey, I got news for you. He is. He is. When we, when we want to get uh, kind of short, when we want to get aggravated, when we want to say things that aren't very nice to our spouse, good thing nobody hears that. Wait a minute. Somebody does hear that. God's there. How many times, uh, uh, years ago, I, I come across that truth, and that's why I try to constantly remind myself, and I ask God to help me, make me aware of your presence. Make me aware of your presence. I don't want to live without being aware that he's here. He's with me. And I need to be aware that he's there. You shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I must, part, I must actively participate in the warfare. I'm aware of his presence. Where? Before me. Beside me. Behind me. Somebody said the other day, somebody was talking to me, I can't remember who it was, they said, we just realized God had our back. Hey, I got news for you. God has your back, your front, your side, your above, your under. God's got everything. If you'll be aware of it. If you'll be aware of him. You see, we have to stay God-centered and not Satan-centered. Sometimes people become so preoccupied with Satan that, you know what, all they think about is, I'm fighting the devil, I'm fighting the devil, I'm fighting the devil. No, you, you ought to be so preoccupied with God that you're, you're just, all you're saying is, I'm serving God, I'm serving God, I'm loving God, I'm, I'm enjoying God. Keep your focus on God. Not on Satan. You know, the, the, what was the purpose? You ever think about this? The purpose of fiery darts or fiery arrows. When, when, you know what it would be? When someone was attacking a city, of course it was awful difficult to attack a city because they had the advantage of being on the wall shooting down at you. And so what they would do is they would take arrows and set them on fire and launch them into the city hoping to start what? Fires inside the city. Well, then what happens? They have to leave sitting on the wall trying to pick them off and they have to go fight the fire. And so while they're fighting the fire, they take the city. Listen, that, that's what Satan loves to do. He'd love to get you fighting all these fires so that you don't serve God. Because you're so busy doing everything else and trying to put out all the fires that, that are going on in your life. And when that happens, you, you lose your focus on God. The Bible says when we run the race, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're to keep our affection set on things above, not on things on the earth. God wouldn't have to tell us that. God wouldn't have to remind us of that if that isn't a problem for us. It is so easy to get our mind and our, our eyes on things down here and all the problems that are going on. Instead of keeping our, our focus on God and our focus on centered on who we ought to keep it focused on. Job is a great example of this. Most of us are familiar with his case. We know now, we, we, have, the, we have the privilege of having read the book and know the, the whole story. And we know that all of Job's problems, everything that he went through, the losing everything and, and his children's death and uh, his, his loss of his business, everything, Listen, all of that was from the hand of Satan. Allowed by God. But that was Satan. 
who got permission from God to do it. And yet, Job stayed God-centered through it all. Job never got focused on Satan. Job never, never, you never read anything in Job about, well, that devil. Well, that, that dirty, rotten scoundrel. Oh, that smutty face. He never talked about Satan. What did Job talk about? The Lord has given and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He, he said, hey, I'm not going to receive good at the hand of the Lord and not receive evil. That's what he told his wife. See, the Bible says that, he, he said, Job never sinned nor charged God foolishly. He kept his focus on God through it all. In fact, he got to a point where he said, hey, fellas, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God can take my life if he wants. But I'm still trusting him. I'm still focusing on him. When he had tried me, I'll come forth as gold. That doesn't happen if you don't keep your eyes on Christ. That doesn't happen if you don't keep your eyes on God. How many times you run into people who, who, who aren't going to church anymore, or don't want to serve with God anymore, and they'll point to somebody else who messed up. Somebody else who did something wrong, and that's their excuse why they're not serving God. Well, what happened? They got their focus off God and started watching people. Now, I got news for you. I don't care who you are. Everybody in this room is made of flesh and blood, and you're going to disappoint somebody. Don't put all your faith in the pastor. The pastor's going to disappoint you. Okay? There's no way to, to, to it, it doesn't matter how long you've been married. You're going to be disappointed. Quentin, how long have you been married? Two months. He's asked, and he asked me tonight if, if it's okay if his wife barks at him. Is that what you asked me? Growls at him. I said, well, you're a little early in your marriage for that to take place, but uh, that comes after the fifth year, amen? But uh, no. Uh, how's that? Huh? Growling at you. Should have said, give her something to eat, amen? But, um, <laughs> listen, I, keep, your, keep your focus on God. Keep your focus. And, and when we're under attack, you know what Job did? He kept his eyes on the Lord till victory came. And God turned it around when he prayed for his friends. Job 42. Satan, listen, when we're under the attack and resisting Satan, you need to be thanking God for His purpose in allowing the attack. Listen, is, is Satan going to get, or any of those fiery darts going to get to you unless God says, God lets them through? Who's our shield? God. So if the dart gets through and gets to us, who let it come through? So He must have a purpose for it. He's got to have a reason for allowing that to get through to us. And while, while Satan would mean it for evil and for hurt, God will use the fire to refine us and to help us and to make us a stronger servant for Him. The thing to remember here is to keep your heart, keep your mind focused on the Lord and His Word, not on the enemy. Stay totally occupied with God. And that is something you, you've got to ask help for. Because that's not normally where we want to go. All we see is the problem. All we see is the, the circumstances. All we see is the difficulties. And we, we show that when someone says, well, you ought to pray about that. Well, I guess I could do that. I guess that's about all we can do now is pray. Really? You see, just by our own verbiage, we, we kind of say, well, I guess if we were down to that, I guess we could do that. And it's, it ought to be the first thing we do, because why? That gets my focus. The Word of God gets your focus back on God. We talked about it Sunday. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It changes your perspective. changes your focus. Gives you a different outlook. Okay? And so you have to have that. So our, our shield is God Himself. 
Number four. Number four. We are to have complete confidence in the shield. And we can have complete confidence in the shield because the shield is God. You have to have complete confidence in God. Now, it doesn't mean, as we said just a minute ago, it doesn't mean that Satan can never touch us. But it means that whether Satan touches us or not is completely up to God. Whether he's going to let that happen or not. He certainly allowed some fiery darts to get through to Job. Did he not? He certainly did. Those fiery darts that intended to destroy a believer or certainly bring great hurt and harm to a believer, the devil's pretty ruthless. The devil can be very devastating. He, he kills, steals, and destroys. That's what he does. So when God allows those darts to get through, He always has a purpose in that. I believe they, they become, as I said earlier, refining measures from God. Fire, fire can destroy or fire can refine. It really, it really depends on what material you're putting the fire to, doesn't it? In 1 Corinthians 3, when it talks about how we all, we all start with the same foundation, the same foundation that we all start with building in our Christian life, there's only one foundation, that is Jesus Christ. He's the only foundation. No other foundation can any man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, okay? So we're all building on that now. But he says you can build with wood, hay, and stubble, or you can build with gold, silver, and precious stones. You say, well now, why is that important? I see houses around here built with wood and not, not necessarily stubble, but uh, they're built with some wood and, and they, but oh, wait a minute. Every man's work, the Bible says, is going to be tested by fire. Now if I'm going to test you by fire, would you rather have gold, silver, precious stones, or would you rather have some wood, hay and stubble. Yeah, the wood, hay and stubble is going to burn pretty quick, isn't it? Now, silver and gold, precious stones, fire does different things to them. So with silver and with gold, you heat that up and you get the fire going and what happens is all the impurities in that rise to the top and then they skim those impurities out and the gold gets pure. The silver gets pure. And, and, and God, God can use those fiery darts from Satan. He can allow them into our life. Why? Because he's trying to purify us. He's trying to, listen, there are, ev there are times that we're not aware of our shield. We're not aware that God's there. We're not acknowledging his presence. And we open ourselves by our bad choices. By, by Every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust, his own desire, and enticed. We get our own desires, we do what we want, what we think, what we feel, and Satan lays the bait out there and we go for it. And unaware, no thought of God being between us and Satan, no thought of God being between us and the temptation, there is always a way to escape. Okay? But we totally ignore it and we go after what we want. God will allow that dart to come through. Why? He's going to teach us. You ever, you ever learn from your mistakes? Huh? Anybody? Huh? Yeah, if you're over 12, you better have. Okay? You've learned from your mistakes, and you learn, you say, well, God, you taught me something there. I learned something. And, and you learn those things, and let God purify you. Metals are heated, and those impurities rise to the top. Look at a couple scriptures with me in the New Testament, will you? James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Right after the book of Hebrews is the book of James. James 1. The Bible says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, okay, is he writing to Christians? Yes, he is. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The Bible sometimes does not always, the word temptation is used, both for when you're tempted with evil, and sometimes the word temptation means that you're being 
tempted or tested by God. And the, the, it's real simple to tell the, the, the difference whether you're, you say, well, am I being tempted or am I being tested? God never tempts any man with evil. God will never tempt you to sin. If there's a temptation for sin or evil, that is from Satan. What God will do is just what the Bible says here. It says diverse or different kinds of temptations, but you know what you know? The trying of your faith. God is trying or testing your faith in Him. Faith, your confidence in Him. Your confidence in your shield. Okay? God's seeing if you're going to rely upon Him. He says the trying of your faith, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That you can be perfect, and that is not sinless, but it means that you're mature. It's a maturing work. You're growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so these trials come, and they come, and God lets some things true. Why? It grows us up. We learn to, we learn to, wear, our, you know, we learn to wear our big boy pants, okay? And we learn to handle things. We learn to say, okay, God, I, I'm understanding what you want me to do. I'm not going to go through life being a spiritual baby, okay? That need, need to be burped and fed and bottled and watched and everything else all the time, okay? God allow those things to come into our life to get us to grow up a little bit. Sometimes you're going to, you know, with your children, sometimes you just let them get a few scrapes and let them get a few bruises. You know why? That's good for them. Not, nothing wrong with that. It's going to teach them to be tough and teach them to grow up a little bit. And God does the same thing with us. In fact, look over at 1 Peter. Keep going to your right after James to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter writes to these believers and he says in verse 6, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Now, a temptation. What's he talking about there? Is that a testing or is it a temptation to sin? Well, what's the next verse say? That the trial of your faith. Oh, it's a temptation to try my faith again. Okay? Just as it was in James. It's amazing how if you, the Bible will explain itself if you just keep reading. Okay? And so the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. God says, I'm trying your faith. Why? I'm trying to purify your faith. I'm trying to work out the impurities. I want you to have complete confidence in me. I want you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. How do I know if I'm trusting God with all my heart? I don't lean to my own understanding. How many times, how many times have you gotten in trouble when you said to yourself, well, I know the Bible says this, but. You know what that means? But I'm leaning to my own understanding. I'm not going to go with what God says. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all thy ways, be aware of your shield. And he will direct your path. He's talking about, listen, God never allows, he's never going to allow Satan to go further than God intends for him to go. Be certain of that. And Peter here, he tells him, listen, I'm refining your faith so that it will be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus said in one of the Gospels? He said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man returns or when He comes back, will He find faith? Will there be anybody that will live by faith? We're all supposed to be walking by faith and not by sight. And so God is continually going to be refining my faith. And listen, the only way to refine that faith, because it's like gold, it has to be put in the fire. I've got to be tested that way. So do you. 
But that refines our faith. And listen, the goal is, is not, God, why are you doing this to me? God, why do I have to go through this? God, what did I do that's so bad? How come you're mad at me? We've covered that, haven't we? God's not angry. God's anger and God's wrath on sin was done at Calvary to Jesus Christ. He's not angry at you. But God is trying to refine your faith. He's going to try your faith. He wants to bring out the impurities. And boy, that I don't know about you, but I see impurities in my faith all the time that God needs to purge out, and He's desiring to do that because I want it to be found under the praise and the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ at His appearing. That's what I want. So take the shield of faith. Consciously. Be aware. The shield of faith is God Himself. God, every morning, would you pray? God, make me aware of Your presence today. God, make me aware that You stand between me and the enemy today. I mean, you, you, you think about it, if, if, if there's a big guy and, and you know, he, he, he's going to pick on this little kid and he's bullying him and all of a sudden, here comes dad up and dad steps between them. Huh. And this big guy says, uh, see you later. <laughs> Not messing with him now. Would you be aware that God's there? Hey, he'll fight your battle for you. He's our shield. He surrounds us. One last thing, and then we'll go home. Look at Psalm 91, would you? I couldn't help but think about this shield that God is to us without thinking of the 91st Psalm. And you think about how God surrounds us, protects us, right, right hand, left hand, in front of us, behind us, above us, under us, Notice what David wrote in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence, think about him protecting us, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a shield. What a God. What a tremendous thing that we can take the shield of faith. As consciously as you put your clothes on. So you won't walk outside and be ashamed. You ought to put on the shield of faith. Because, listen, far greater than being ashamed is to walk out without the shield of faith, without the awareness that God is there. And we're wide open to Satan's fiery darts. Those are much more lethal, much more dangerous than just being embarrassed by not having on the proper clothing. So let's put on the armor of God. You'll li Listen, you'll avoid serious injury at the hand of the enemy. Be aware of God's presence. Be aware. Ask God to make you aware that He's there. And, and let's quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen? Let's stand together, shall we? Father in heaven, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the being our shield, just like you were for Abraham, and our exceeding great reward. 
what a joy it is that we can know you. You can be real to us. Oh God, forgive us for the many times that we go about our business and we don't even acknowledge that you're here with us. We don't acknowledge your presence. We're not aware that you're there. Oh, help us to be very conscious that we take up our shield of faith. And our faith is in you. We have no one else to go to. You're our God. Keep us focused. Keep us centered on you. Lord, our country, many in our country are looking toward the White House or the Congress. Father, our focus and our, 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 our attention is stayed upon Thee. We want to be God-centered. We want to be God-focused. Keep us there, Lord. Keep us dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And we'll thank You for it. Now, Father, watch over us as we leave this place tonight. Lord, bless the flyers as they go out the last three days. I pray that each of us would do our part in inviting others and getting all these flyers out, inviting people to come, and then, Lord, do what only you can do on Sunday. Bring people here to hear the Word of God, praying for numbers of people to be saved. Pray your will will be done. Lord, use us, I pray, and make us aware of your presence as we leave this place tonight. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm pressing on the upward way. Remember to sign out some flyers and uh, let's, let's get the rest of them out. And uh, then we'll see you, Lord willing, uh, 9 o'clock sharp Saturday morning and uh, being, getting ready to go. All right? Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. Don't forget, if you signed up to get a turkey, pick it up over in the fellowship hall. All right? Here we go. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You are dismissed.